welcome to the GameCraft GameCast on TheGamerAccess.com. I'm your host, Bronson Fiore. Joined by... Anthony Ta. What is going on, Anthony? It's been a while since we've done this. It's been like, what, since July? Yeah. last time? Yeah, but due to a new schedule that TGA has set up, uh, the, the, this, this, this podcast gets to rive, rise... Rise, uh, rise from the grave, and you did not just hear me turn on my television. Um, so, Anthony, how you been? Been good? Doing well? Yeah, well, finals. Finals. Right. I I got out of the busy season, and now we are in the dead season. So I have just kind of I've been catching up on video games, right? Video yeah. Games. Video games. Lots and lots of video games that we've played since July. But I'm going to go off topic already because it's the Gamecast. Uh, and say <laughs> that when I was working those batshit cray cray hours, you know, so for those of you who didn't know, I was working 12 hour days, seven days a week. Um, Anthony, you remember this? Uh, what? Well, yeah. And I needed caffeine to stay alive, basically. Like, I, I was so tired. Like, I was not playing game. Like, I was super excited for Bayonetta 2. Did not play it at all during this period just because I was tired. Like, I would come home. And, like, the only reason I even played that Halo collection is because I had to review it. Like, the rest of the time, it was just, come home, fuck around on the internet for 20 minutes, sleep. Come home, fuck around on the internet for 20 minutes, sleep. But during this time period, I acquired an addiction to fucking Starbucks. Because um, what happened was, is I was, uh, I go to pick up a friend of mine that I work with, and then we go down to the Starbucks, and, or they want to go to Starbucks, I'm like, okay, well, I'm here, I'll get something too. And this just would happen like two or three times a week, and now I am fucking addicted I go once a week only, and even then, I consider that to be a problem. So yeah, um, college-aged students' coffee kind of, kind of like a thing that goes with our generation these days. Um, I mean, it started with energy drinks in high school, then it became coffee in college. I, so I didn't like energy drinks in high school. I thought they were disgusting. Yeah, yeah, well, just, you remember those mornings when you had to show up to a standardized test, for some reason, all of a sudden, half the people were bringing Monster or um, Red Bull to... I need, this, I need this liquid crack cocaine to focus. Yeah, uh, it's like, it's really strange. You show up in the morning, and those things are way worse than coffee, so... Or the mocha frappuccino drinks that you get. It, it, that was high school. Because <laughs> it gives you that quick burst. And, uh... Sticking with the trend, we te- uh, GameCraft at the time at least tested energy drinks too. Oh my god, it was the worst. That I think that's what kind of ruined me for energy drinks. Is like every every other couple of weeks we would try like a new energy drink, and they were all disgusting and all tasted very similar to each other. I don't know how people could drink that. I don't know how Nick Dread drank uh, Redline for like three days. Uh, you know, each morning. While we were at E3 last summer, so that was uh, something. I mean, yeah, like, there's so many times where I'm just like, man, this this should not have this effect on the human body. Like, this, the, the, bo- the human body is meant to sleep, to get, to, you know, be awake. It's not meant to, like, oh, here's this fucking chemical mix-up here, be it all natural or not, it, that makes you feel like you're flying, for an hour and then crash. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's uh, pretty nasty stuff. I mean, like, I can say, like, at least, like, the mochas at Starbucks and coffees, I at least, like, come down from those. Like, I don't, like, I at least come down and, like, once I'm off the caffeine high, I feel relatively normal versus, um, versus those energy drinks when I crash. I feel like I just need a goddamn nap. Like that's that's all I feel when I when I crash on one of those. They're you know? really expensive too, and I remember looking so because I look at energy drinks and I, and I never really drink any of them, so I don't really know how much they cost. And then I see their price, I'm like, really? You're paying that much just so you can 
feel like you've got the burst only to crash down really hard and not only that but there's like some of them that say like no well, sugar which is even worse in my opinion because it's like well you got to replace that sugar with something it's like diet soda but well, much worse I mean, anthony that you gotta remember during these crazy shifts i was spending 20 to 25 dollars a week on starbucks like, so i mean, I mean well, yeah like that's the other thing too that i kind of re- notice it's like wow so many people line up for expensive coffee like um <laughs> I think the only time I drank coffee uh, once a week was maybe this two or three week period in like summer of 2013. And I didn't go to Starbucks. I went to uh, Einstein Brothers Bagels. And I ordered a, uh, uh, what's it called? A vanilla hazelnut latte. I think it was like 550 or 650 So, yeah, it was really expensive because with that same amount of money, I could have bought lunch. Pretty good I lunch, mean, too. I mean, yeah, like, I, I think, like, my, my, so this is what I get when I'm at Starbucks. When I'm at Starbucks, I get, I get, e- I get either a mocha, or if it's, like, now, I get a peppermint mocha, which I showed you the other day, and you know they're delicious. Oh, man, it actually does taste like peppermint. It's so good, it's, right? It's not, it's not nasty peppermint, either, because you know how they do stuff like bacon soda, and they're just absolutely nasty? And no, this actually tasted like peppermint with coffee. A little bit of coffee in there, so yeah, it was great. Yeah, le- le- like I, so I'll usually get a mocha or a peppermint mocha. Occasionally, I'll go a pumpkin spice latte, and yeah, I, everyone here can give me shit for that. I don't care. Um, but I'll occasionally have a peppermint, or you know, and I'll get that with a piece of <clears throat> a piece of lemon pound cake. And that order right there is seven dollars. That is a seven dollar and fifty cent order at a coffee shop. Well, a lot of people, or at least where I go, a lot of people like to buy Starbucks because it's that high quality uh, coffee that tastes good and oh, wakes yeah, you up no, in the morning. I, I, so I, I agree because I, I actually had a peppermint mocha at Seven Eleven the other day. Because it was the day before I got paid, and I, and I just did, and I just needed coffee, but I didn't have the money. I was like, "Fuck, I'm, I cannot afford a five dollar coffee." Okay, well the coffee here is like a dollar something, so I'll, I'll get coffee here, and it was okay, and the aftertaste was just fucking horrible. So I mean, I mean, you, you, you are paying for quality. It's just it. I, I think about where else that that money could go. From a food standpoint, I'm just like, oh god, like seven dollars. That's that's a meal at Steak and Shake, like with a drink, fries, and all, and more. It's like, uh, like a Steak like, and Shake, you can get yourself like a triple steak burger with fries and all the water you can drink for like five dollars, something like if that. If you want a soda, if you want a soda, it's like six fifty total. Yeah, but uh, it, and, and with unlimited fruit refills. Yeah, and, of course, and mind that, you, where. Mind you, where we are, there it's really cheap, but the price you have to pay, of course, is you have to drive all the way out to Stead. So. Okay, well, let me, let me talk about the alternative. I have an egg roll king right down the road from me. It's not even half a mile away. Uh, and it is $6.20-some-odd cents for this massive plate of Chinese food. It is just huge. You know, like they, they fill that box all the way and then some. And that, you know, and that is you know that'll fill me up for two meals and i'm paying and here i am paying you know granted it's worth it because it is amazing quality but it's still at the end of the day i am paying seven dollars and twenty cents for a piece of cake and a and a large cup of coffee which Um, will be gone in one hour which yes all that will be gone with you know like now the caffeine high will last me an hour or two, but the but yeah that that pound cake isn't super filling. Like it gets me until, you know, it gets me for a while. But it's not like oh man, this is a big hearty breakfast. So <laughs> I, I don't know, man. That's yeah. yeah I just don't drink coffee. The thing is, I normally don't either. Like I'm, unless I'm... I really have to be up in the morning. It's like one of the, like, even then I have, like, these refrigerated frappuccino mochas, and they're really awesome. I chug that stuff like crazy, but even then I'm just like, nah, I don't drink coffee. 
Uh, two reasons. One, I prefer to uh, live on 100% pure natural human sleep. And two, coffee. I don't know what caffeine does, but here's the thing. If I'm tired and I drink coffee to try and stay awake, it actually makes it makes me worse because I am neither awake nor asleep. My head eventually becomes, it feels like a zombie. I'm neither alive nor asleep and I just become vegetated. That's what it does to my head when I'm tired. So I just don't bother with it. I mean, if I'm wide awake, it's totally fine. I sometimes, yeah, I, I sometimes need it. I, I will say that that much, but it, it's not my ideal thing. And the thing is, normal, I don't drink it like every day. Like I only drink it on those times when I'm super tired or if the coffee is just delicious. And that is the case here. Like the, this was a case of, okay, I have to be, yeah, I have to wait for work at how, five in the fucking morning. You. This is like how they get you. Just it's expensive, but it's really good, so you keep buying. Yeah, like it's. So, you know, I mean, I like I install the rewards app on my phone. Dear God. Oh dear. But the, what? What? You're walking kind of... with your iPhone at Starbucks. Uh, yeah, I. <laughs> Matt, get a Mac. Uh, I don't know. Maybe for my next laptop. Well, it... just get a Mac Air or an iPad. I mean, I actually have been looking into an iPad just because, like, I want a, I want an e-reader, and I already own books on iBook. So it's like, well, I mean, if I'm already, if I already own content here, and they're, and they are known as one of the best tablets, why not? But that's that was my thought process there. So okay, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't go to Starbucks because it's like. Man, if I need coffee, I usually kind of need it on the fly. And there's, and you know, when obviously when you go to school, there's always a line there. Um, or at least there's there's a line, or, or at least there's a line in like the main building. There's like two of them on campus, and like one's well, on the north end, which everyone goes to, obviously, and then there's one on the south end, which no one uses. But I don't know. So in my case, in my case, I go. There's the one on Keystone, and then there's the one uh, downtown. And I typically will go to the one on Keystone because it's right by that friend's house that I work with. Like, I mean, it's right down the road. It, it is just there. And then, um, and then the other one is downtown because it's on the way to work, and it typically doesn't have crowds. The only time it ever has crowds is on weekends, which I find weird, but uh, whatever. Hey, guys, let's hang out today. Let's go to Starbucks. Well, not only that, but, like, the thing is, is, like, I... When I get coffee, it is at the just the most ungodly hour, right? Like it, it is the fucking nightmare hour. Like it, you know, it is the dark hour from Persona, right? Like that's what it is, and and that way there's no one there anyway. There is no one at Starbucks at five a.m., sir. I'm telling you right now. There's barely anyone there at six, and you might get kind of a crowd at seven. That place doesn't get busy till eight. So, but that that's typically how it goes. That place starts to get busy at like eight ish. So, well, no lines are good. Uh, I'm good for my wallet. Good to get my <laughs> copy quickly. Though. Huh. Um. Uh, Well, I mean, so as long as we're talking about shopping, might as well go to uh, Black Friday. We we ex- we we participated in the blood sport this year. It, it, it wasn't was, really bloody was, because yeah, we say, showed up six hours late. Yeah, it was very tame gladiatorial combat this year. Well, it was tame. Well, there was like two reasons I could think of that were tame. One, people actually didn't care this year, or two, it's because they all opened at six p.m. on Thanksgiving Day. Which meant that all the crazy people were done, so that kind of left normal people at twelve ish, I guess. Yeah, I ended up buying. Madden. Except for the mall, the mall was still midnight. Yeah, I, I ended up buying Madden. What'd you get again? Uh, I got Shadow of Wardor. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I got Shadow of Wardor. I think that's the only thing I bought. Yeah. Uh, I picked up Madden for the PS. Uh... 
PS Trace or PS4, not PS Trace, PS Quattro. Uh, PS Quattro. Oh, I have a terrible pun for you, and I thought of the other day. What do you call it when one of Santa's helpers takes a picture of himself? What? An elfie. Okay, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I just heard you just like drop your fucking hand on the floor, on the fucking ground. Uh, Sorry, I'm like trying to look for like this little cap for my USB drive that fell down. Oh god. Um, no, I thought I thought you dropped your microphone for a second. It's like I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> so done. Not doing this anymore. Um. Uh, you are quickly becoming the worst pun joke I've ever met. Like the pun uh, joke machine. Um. Yeah. Well, I part of it's because so my boss at work hates puns, so I've been force feeding her puns because I sit like right near her. Wow. So like I I'll go into work and I'm like hey K, hey K. Uh, get, uh, what did the cannibal get when he arrived late to the party? What? The cold shoulder. Okay. Get it? I know. Get it? Get I know. Not? Okay. Terrible character <laughs> side. Um, but but that, that's basically what I'm doing with, you know, when I get straight into work, is read a part to my boss, Go set up my station and proceed to ruin America. Um, so let's see what else. But well, we've yeah, I don't know. Black Friday was kind of neat this year. Um, it was really quiet. It was really night. I mean, it was really quiet, which is nice. And even then, when we were at the mall at midnight, um, uh, there was a line, but all you ha- but all we did was just kind of stand around for like thirty or forty five minutes, and then we're done. And then the line was gone. Yeah, uh, and at line... Best Buy, and at Best Buy, TVs everywhere. You would think the game consoles and the TVs would sell out like crazy, like they used to be. Well, we kind of live in the year twenty fourteen. That doesn't really happen anymore. Dude, or at least game, not this year. Game consoles, as far as the eye could see. I mean, like the Xbox One was like the biggest seller of uh, Black Friday game consoles. But even then, we still found like a giant pile of Assassin's Creed bundles. We just found a giant pile of PS Four bundles, Wii U bundles. You know. You know, you can still get a 3DS pretty easily at 12.30, 12.30 a.m. It's just... And TV's I mean, you, everywhere. You just, you just walked in and got a 3DS. Like, you didn't have to fucking worry about it at all. Yeah, I just walked in and bought a 3DS XL. No problem. Uh, granted, it was GameStop, I so... How, I feel that's how that should be. Like, that... that the, the fucking Black Friday for these consoles should not be this nightmare. Even for these televisions... Like these make these fucking manufacturers are making a profit on these, so they should stock enough. Uh, like the, well, the I don't know if they make a profit when they're selling at such a cut rate price. Oh, uh, I mean, because you got to think about it: a four hundred dollar Xbox One is being sold as a three hundred thirty dollar bundle. I mean, I, it's hard to make money when you're doing it that way. Yeah, well, and Target offered you a fifty dollar gift card if you bought an Xbox One. So yeah. Really, so, I mean, really, that was a $280 machine at one I mean, point. There were some things that were sold out, like, um, like, say, certain Beta- games. Certain like, games were sold out. Yeah, like, certain very specific things were set out, sold out. Like, for example, like, Beats headphones at Target, the, I think it was the $80, or $80 kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Those were completely gone instantly. Uh, but do you walk around? Shelves are still pretty darn stocked. Stuff everywhere. I mean, so as long as we're talking about this, console bundle sales have still been going on um, since then. And uh, Microsoft is actually uh, is actually as sweetened the deal a little bit for there. So has Sony. Sony, if you buy a four hundred dollar PS4, you will get a choice of. Grand Theft Auto, Destiny, Far Cry, or Little Big Planet for free. Isn't Grand Theft Auto already part of the bundle? The, no, that's uh, that's if you buy the well, 
it's part of that bundle, so either or you're getting Grand Theft Auto, but if you choose like the Destiny bundle or this digital promo bundle, you get an additional little thing there. Okay. Um the other but Microsoft, not to be outdone, for three hundred and thirty dollars still, you can get the Assassin's Creed Unity bundle along with one of the following games. Grand Theft Auto V, Call of Duty, Halo, Metro Redux, Titanfall, Dragon Age, The Crew, Plants vs. Zombies, The Evil Within, Wolfenstein, The Lego Movie Game, Lego The Hobbit, Watch Dogs, The Wolf Among Us, Sherlock Holmes, Madden, Lego Batman, <clears throat> Monopoly, Terraria, NHL 15, Project Spark, WWE, uh, 20k or 2k 15 sorry wow so you get one of those wow I said it right I said you know I said it when they announced these bundles this is going to be their system if you are a parent and your kid asks for video games because so, cause, I mean first off it's already cheaper right at 330 and versus one game you get two and now you get three. So that $70 you save, that's the controller for the brother or the sister or the whoever. You know, like, you know, like, like parents are very conscious of these things with these games, especially parents who don't play, play them. And it's like, okay, well, they can get Destiny on either. They can get all these games on either. So I will get this Xbox thing. Well, you're, well, you're also living in North America. So what's the game console of choice in North America? The Xbox. For 11 months, it was PlayStation 4. For 11 months, but I'm talking about, like, in the past. Yep. Because it was, two, because like, it was the Halo system. Yeah. It was, I, it was, it was the Microsoft system. I mean, like, yeah, Sony is uh, still a sales leader and has been, uh, Sony is still a sales leader, but does Sony have a pop culture icon of a franchise? I mean, Nintendo does, but that is Pokemon, which is on 3DS, and you know people buy more 3DSs by the truckload than they do we use. So you know, kids we'll get to we'll get to that sales update in a minute. Yeah, uh, but but you know, as far as game consoles go, Microsoft is pretty much you know told North America, this is your game system, not those two. Th- this is in true, way. but you, even then though, Sony is still has a big lead. And Sony, in my opinion, is going to have the games to keep pushing because I I think Forza is not as big as Gran Turismo. It's still not even in the even in the states. Like it, you know, like yeah, Gran but Forza Turismo. is like yeah, but Forza is it's on its way to challenge that in a way because let's be honest here, Gran Turismo one through four was ridiculous. Yeah. Um. But five. But GT five and six. Um. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Gran Gran Turismo 5 and 6, but you can kind of tell that, you know, Forza does a better job of, you know, getting you excited about the muscle cars and the tuning and all that stuff. And it has realistic enough driving mechanics, which is really what you, which is all you really need, at least, as far as the average driver goes. And you have, like, more cars that people care about than Gran Turismo, which spends a little bit too much time talking about Nissan Skylines and tiny little K cars, so yeah, it, it's it Forza's, I think, feel like Forza's catching up, not to mention, they're like putting out a game every year now with Forza in the name, like it's just, it's just a constant trade-off, I wouldn't be surprised if like Forza 6 comes out in 2015 because it's a I two-year cycle, it, it's a two-year cycle on those, on like the main, on the motorsports, and then it's a, like another two-year cycle for the Horizons I mean, that's kind of how it's been, right, ever since Forza 3. Like, we had Forza 3, and then we had Horizon a year later, and then we had Forza 4, and then we yeah, had... Yeah, and uh, it pisses me off that, you know, Forza 4 was kind of like a minorly improved Forza 3 with a lot of flash on it, which isn't a bad thing because I really like Forza 4, and I even played it again today, but... You know, the, the, it, it kind of felt like their focus was more on making cars pretty to lure you in to drive the latest Ferrari, whereas... Um, you know, instead of like focusing on physics, but you know that's just me. But I think Forza is catching up. I mean, you know, it has a more diverse, it has a more nicely balanced car I, list and I, just I mean, more desire in there. 
But moving back to the the Xbox though, the the the, the topic at hand. Um, the, I love this. I love the competition. I love that this makes things competitive. Because if things were going to continue, like if things continued the way they were, it would have been by the end of next holiday season, it would have been the PS2 all over again, right? Like that that that's it could that, be, but here. It could have been the PS2 all over again, but you kind of had to. But at the same time, it probably wouldn't have because um, it would be sort of PS2 all over again. Because let's be honest, here, Microsoft doesn't just have Halo; they actually have Forza now, which is better than the original Xbox, where it was just only Halo and Forza was just like the small racing game that was new um, to even the system. Then, even then, though, like that—that's it's still. And you still also have to kind of like remember that. You know, the Xbox has much bigger name recognition these days than it used to be, and it's freaking Microsoft, and they're basically doing this whole gigantic, or at least I think they're doing this one gigantic one Microsoft platform, and the Xbox has become this giant media game console, and it basically, now everyone knows about it, in a way. I, I realize so, that, but the the price was still a concern, the games are still a concern, there, there are a lot of concerns there. I, I'm not saying it would have been as bad, but I'm saying that we would have gotten a... A, a case where, okay, Sony owns the majority of the market, you know, yes, the Xbox is still going to get multi-plats, but, you know, like, th- there's a lot of reasons that I'm excited for this when it comes to mm. the whole, you know, because... Uh, I don't know, it's just, they were still selling 360Z when there were no games on it. Yeah, that's because there were, yeah, that's because what was the alternative? Uh, like, like that, three. It, yes, which was two hundred dollars more expensive, and had even less games on it. No, like I'm not talking. No, I'm not talking about in 2006. I'm talking about like in 2011, 2012. This is it's true. Like, yeah, because it's like they put out the Kinect thing. Oh no, enthusiasts are being scared away from the 360, and you know games were starting to dry up because the system was starting to age to a point. And you you were probably getting Halo. I don't know what system it was like. Uh, that was Halo 4 and probably, I don't know, remember what else, Forza, Gears, Forza, Fable, Halo, or something like that. And people were still buying it, at least in North America. So, you know, it's not like the original Xbox where Halo was the only thing, only feature that thing had. Well, yeah, nowadays, I mean, the, nowadays, this, like... I think this is, it's partly because this time they have third-party support, too, because the original Xbox had, like... <laughs> they have third-party support by paying a lot of them. Yeah, like, the original Xbox had some third-party support from, like, very, very big publishers, but, like, you know, Square Enix wouldn't dare touch the system. You know, uh, like, the, the Atlas didn't touch... I think Atlas published one game on the original Xbox. Uh, you know, like, that. Sega published, I think, a couple of games, but not many, and... And then you have the PS2, which is just because of that, it's getting all these exclusives. I think the X, the the X. Also, you got to remember the the 360 had the advantage of this is where my friends are, because you know it got that early lead. I still I still think that's like the case because I could name a lot of people off the top of my head right now who already have an Xbox One. I was just, you know, here's the even thing. if I, the even if the PS4 was kind of storm off like the almost like the PS2, still a lot of people I know who own. Well, then again, yeah, they rich Xbox. Lots of people, lots of people, quote, had that too. So, yeah, I don't know. I I think it's an interesting case either way. I'm just saying. That I just I just feel like the difference now is that the Xbox has much bigger name recognition among the general public than the original Xbox. Like, much bigger. And, like, you know, the 360 pretty much built that. So I don't yeah. think there was going to be a case of where you had the PS2. Because, you know, you look at the PS4 and it doesn't have... I mean, it doesn't feature the Assassin. It doesn't feature Halo. And Halo's kind of like a pop culture icon ever since Halo 2 and 3. No, no, no um, you're right. The, the game they're giving away with the, the PlayStation is Grand Theft fucking Auto. Which everyone bought last year. For their ex it, for their Xbox 360s and PS3s. The, the, the thing is, though, at the end which of the day, you it's can like, also get on the Xbox One. It's but it but the same thing can be said about Assassins. Like like you can still play Unity on the PS4. I'm doing it right this instant. Uh, you know. Then how is the PS4 play... going to storm off then? Because it, because all the enthusiasts are camping in that corner currently. 
I wouldn't say all the enthusiasts. I think the the most well, yeah. the, most enthusiasts I know are actually in Team PC at this current moment. <laughs> um, okay. They're they're backing the master race. It seems. Um, the the thing is though is they had such a huge lead. And part of that was price, and part of that was public perception. And you know, I know several hardcore Xbox fans who were like, "Fuck the Xbox One," because. Of the connect and the price no, and the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what? the and the the interface. Like I know people who bought Xbox One and sold them because on purely on the back of the interface. You know, so I mean It's It's bad. Look, that yeah. interface is bad. Let's let's call the, it what it is. The, yeah, it's like Microsoft could have had another original Xbox debacle in a way where the PS4 just stormed off so far ahead, there's no hope of ever catching up. Because when they unveiled that Xbox One, it was it was literally seen as probably the worst game console an enthusiast could ever imagine. I mean, he, here's the thing. Expensive, it, doesn't really play games, and just looks like a devoid moneymaker and not much else. I mean, here's so, the yeah. thing. If Microsoft didn't move as quickly as they did... I, I, we we would have seen another PS2. I was willing to bet like that that because you you look at how far behind they were. Like the the I, I mean at one point this past year the PS4 was doubling that damn thing in sales. You know like that that that's that's almost unheard of. You know that 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 is almost unheard of amongst consoles like this. But it it was happening and. I don't know, man. Like, like you, you, you have to think that Microsoft kind of realized this, especially Don Matrick, or not Don Matrick, Phil Spencer. Sorry, dear God, I got those two mixed up. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Uh, like, you, you, you think about that for a second, and you're like, well, I mean, if Phil Spencer didn't act quickly, because right now, let's say they didn't do that holiday price drop, and they said, okay, well, we're going to ride this $400 train into the fucking sun, uh, I don't think they would have had, had gotten the Black Friday win or the past month win. You know, I mean, right I now, like it, they probably wouldn't have. But I didn't. I don't feel like the PS4 is going to storm out. Like it's the fastest. What was it? Like the PS4 is still on track to be the fastest selling game system ever, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, but I don't know. In some ways, I feel like yeah, okay. Maybe there could be another PS2, but at the same time, the Xbox name is a lot oh, bigger I don't, than it used to I be. Don't, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be another PS2. I'm saying it had the potential to turn into that. Like, like if I know, it, but even if like my, like if Microsoft continued with the original Xbox One concept, um, you know, connect only, all that kind of stuff, yeah, I would agree that the PS4 was going to become a PS2, but right now, even if they didn't really have this, you know, super, you know... Uh, crash sale price kind of thing. I still think mm, Xbox is still kind of big. It's not going to be. It's not going to be a PS2 runoff, but I mean th- this. Past, it's not going to be a PS2 runoff. Yeah, like I think it would have been a. I think it could have been a blowout though. It's still a blowout, but I wouldn't call it like a PS2 great blowout. Yeah, well, where I mean, you're where you know the Sony had so it's like 120 versus all their competitors combined for 40 million. Forty-five yeah. million. Oh no! You factor in Dreamcast, they might they break fifty. <laughs> um, Just Sony's one hundred and twenty million. So basically, Sony outsold all of their competitors combined, like three to one or something. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Yeah, I, I think and developer, you know, developers do favor the PS4. Uh, it's already the more powerful system well, currently. It, I mean, I, the- I I have no idea right now because. I, I don't I, I don't talk to developers if I think about it. It's like, well, if you're looking for a system to port between Windows and consoles, Xbox is probably not too hard because they use both they both use DirectX. Whereas the Sony system, because they can't use DirectX, probably uses some form of OpenGL, which is also in and yeah, NVIDIA and ATI card support that too. But Sorry, I probably don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Still, I think Microsoft just this past 
By doing this holiday bundle and having such a strong holiday, they have turned this into a fight. Versus what it was, which was a fucking beatdown. Not a PS2 level beatdown, but still a beatdown. Like a hardcore one. The way I'm kind of seeing it currently is Microsoft is working their butts off to sell a system to you. Like, you know, it's like, okay, we, we've got rid of the Kinect, we've got a bundle, and hey, we're going to throw in a game, we're going to throw in two games, and then we're going to also throw in another, and you get to pick one game out of this list of 15. Please buy our system. Sony is reacting a bit, but they're not being drastic about it. Because they're like, oh, okay, well, for four hundred dollars, you can get two of the best games of last year remastered, um, which I, is I, which I, isn't I, bad, but you know, but you can kind of tell like they're not, they're not like they're not panicking at all yet, because uh, and I, I, I and I feel like because they're I think what Sony's trying to do is that they're going to wait until after the holiday season is over, like January February, to see if this PlayStation's still you know on shaky ground, and if they feel so, then they're gonna think about maybe you know maybe lowering a price or doing whatever to help boost sales because what microsoft's bundle thingy is they're having right now it ends in early january yeah i i think that if if sales keep the way they are though they might just keep this as a permanent thing like that that's that's the that's the sense i'm getting i know that the you know the xbox one is not a bad console but I think Sony also knows their consoles in more demand, and I also know, and um, uh, and I also know that they have several deals lined up for exclusive content for third-party games, along with their exclusives. Uh, I mean, you know, like I realize that Bloodborne isn't like a huge system seller, like the Souls series isn't a. Uh, isn't like the biggest system seller but like that's still you know something that a large amount of people want to play and the only place they can get it on is on playstation you know so let's say that's worth a half a million consoles right there and then and okay well batman's getting exclusive content on ps4 and is being advertised as a ps4 game you know and then destiny did way better on ps4 and if we keep if we keep getting fucking trends like this, because you know Madden did better on PS4 and was even though it was advertised as an Xbox One game, and so on and so forth, um, you know, like, like if we keep getting things like that, it, it won't matter. I think uh, micro though I, I've always believed that the ways that you sell a game console uh, are the, the especially in the modern era the three things like okay. Your games, your price, and where are my friends at? Sony currently has where are my friends at? Because the majority of my friends went PS4. Some of them did go Xbox One, but the majority went to the PS4. I think you need more than small sample size. But um, like, what did you say? Was it like it was price, games, and where price, your friends are at? Games and where are your friends at? Those are well, those are mm, what you need. I kind of feel like the fourth thing you kind of need is name recognition because nintendo has price they have games and a lot of my friends have those systems people aren't actually actually buying wii u's though i mean I they're I selling think... better than they did last year because amiibos and smash happened but you know it's not like it's not the wii it's the wii u and no one's really buying it still compared to the fact that the ps4 and xbox one are just kind of blasting off I think that's partially just Nintendo's fault for not having any third-party games. So, like, Do third parties even want to work on the thing? No, they don't. But you know, it's the, like even if they made a similar system, they still wouldn't want to work on the thing because it, because history, whatever. Oh, so, I don't know, man. It, it it's a hard call, but I I think that that, that Nintendo could. Uh, Nintendo can help themselves in a lot of ways by having a system that third parties would be actually willing to work on. Because uh, tons of people I know bought Wii U for Smash, tons of people are buying Wii U for Smash, but a lot of people are skipping the Wii U because they're like, well, yeah, Smash looks cool, but I'm not going to be able to get Batman, Metal Gear, etc., etc., etc. on it. So, I'm not going to be able to get Madden on it. Like, you can't get Madden on that system. How crazy is that? 
do you even want Madden on that system when you have a PlayStation? Like, even if, say, the Wii was the same power, would you even get it on that system, even though you have a PlayStation 4? I personally wouldn't, but I'm saying there's that person who only buys one game console, because we all know that person. There's tons of them. You know, maybe two. And that person who buys their one game console, or they're the kid who gets to ask for one game console for their for their birthday or Christmas, like, says, I really want to play Smash Brothers, but I really like football and Call of Duty, uh, so I'm going to ask for the Xbox and the PlayStation, because those are the ones who have those. Uh, so... Uh, at, at Nintendo's half-assed attempt at third-party support. Because that's what it was. Like, when the Wii U launched, that was a half-assed attempt at third-party support. Hmm. Yeah, like, 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 let's look at the launch for the Wii U when they were all like, oh, we have third-party support, C, C. Yep, Mass Effect 3, that's third-party support, all right. Mm-hmm. That game's only a year old at this point. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, we, we have, uh... Okay, oh. how would okay, how would you do it? I mean, I you know, because let's the, be honest here, it's not like you can just go up to the tech team and say you got to make a system that's equally as powerful so we can get third parties. Because how are you going to convince management there's even a guarantee? Okay, and so, Nintendo is not like Sony or Microsoft well, well, where they got uh, giant so, checks to just freely but, hand out. Yeah, but, like but Nintendo was, has a lot of money. Was the, was the current solution worth it? Because the current solution wasn't certainly worth it, and their half and their third party attempt was quite frankly half assed. I mean, you like first off, not only are those ports of those games old as hell at launch, even you know, even at launch, all those goddamn ports were older than dirt at that point, and most of them didn't run well. You know, Epic Mickey, the power of two frames per second. Oh, uh, like that's you know, and it's just like, ugh, God, why? Uh, and and especially at the launch of a system, because like, who is the person that uh, who is the person that is buying a Wii U at launch and goes, man, I haven't played Batman yet. I'm gonna play this Batman game two years after it's been out. Oh, like, like, and since we just haven't seen any third-party support, like, Watch Dogs came out, first of, hey, Watch Dogs, this big game that's supposed to be a big boom for the Wii U, and it ended up being, you know, the, I believe, the 11th best-selling Wii U game for the month it was out. Oh, uh, like, oh. And I, and I and I don't think it's that Wii U owners don't want good third party games. It's like they're not being given to them. Oh, so, I somehow that, feel the co- the problem is a lot more complicated than that. I think it can be. It's just that because it's like developers want something that's simple to port. So then it means Nintendo has to build a system equal power. But then that system has to support as many features as the PlayStation Four and Xbox One in order to continue staying competitive. In order for them to even be bothered to be porting. And then of course you have, and then of course you have to do a study of like, do people really want to buy a Nintendo system, keep it as a Nintendo system, and also be playing all these games, which is a giant question mark because I don't think such study has been conducted yet. And also you now have like maybe a four hundred dollar Nintendo system, and then of course now Nintendo is not really Nintendo because. Because they tend to do odd things, and they haven't. If that was their game console, I mean, the thing is, there's, there's a lot of things that like, you know. I, there's so I, many I, question marks about the plan. It's just like, oh, we we'll just make your system more powerful, and just tell third parties to make stuff for you. See, easy problem solved. And I'm, I'm sitting here, and I'm just thinking, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's ever going to be that easy for those guys. I, I think part of it is like, okay, part of the reason the Wii U was so expensive uh, was the gamepad, and I'm like, I. The gamepad is cool, but I feel it from it for most things. Uh, like I like to be quite frank. I mean, I just I I don't get much benefit from the gamepad. Like I I, I think playing in bed is neat. If, you know, I think well, you know, here's the thing: if if Nintendo tried to be PlayStation, it would be outdone by PlayStation. 
Yeah, but like then they like need, you, they could they try need... to be PlayStation and get third parties and have equal power and have a common sense controller and do everything, but they're going to be outdone by PlayStation, who's been doing PlayStation for years. And that, then they need to find a way to innovate with to. And how it... would you innovate? Because at this point, you it's kind of like really hard for you to sit down and come up with some control scheme that isn't you know that don't, that then, only then lasts for like a good. Then you don't do it through the controller. Then then you just say, hey, we're going to focus towards extra horsepower or through... Extra you know, horsepower what... doesn't make you stand out whatsoever. Well, it kind of does, but that's that's not oh. innovation. Yes, my car has 10 more horsepower than yours. It's innovative. Mm, no. Well, you know... I don't I... know. It's It's like... It's like it's... I feel like sometimes Nintendo has like the nightmare of a job of trying to be staying like Nintendo where they have to come with like the next big thing in a way, right? Because and of course in the old days it would be wouldn't be too bad because like the N64 had the analog stick. Um Super Nintendo kinda like brought more buttons and all that kind of stuff, and the Game Boy was like this awesome, cheap, uh, monochromatic screen, a portable system that didn't eat batteries like crazy. Uh, but it's like nowadays, what can you do? It's like, what can you come up with? And yeah, and the Wii happened. That was I mean, huge. I mean, the Wii, the Wii was a really neat idea. It was really before its time. But most people, when playing games, just want to sit and play games. And then I look over to the, you know, I look over at the the Wii U, and I'm like, this, this is neat, but. If you're telling me I can either have a system that is is modern, you know, in every way, or I can have this weird gamepad that makes sure I can play games in my living room, I'm going to choose the more modern system in most cases. Um, well, like I said, you say, oh, well, just make it more powerful and it'll solve your problems. Well, eh, uh, no. Sometimes... Even if they made a competitive system that was like a PlayStation and probably outdid the PlayStation horsepower numbers and price, I kind of can't help but feel like there's probably some image problem attached to that also. It's like, they can make an equally powerful system, but image, ha image like nowadays is like a huge deal because it's like, oh, we don't want to do that because it says that name on it. Somehow I kind of... I don't know. I just don't feel that it's as simple as making a powerful system. Because there's so much more to it than just making a powerful system, stopping on a competent power system and making it really common sense to the point where you basically just made another PlayStation that just says Nintendo on it. But and yeah, you have, is, you have Nintendo first parties, that's great, but... But but yeah. like here's the thing. you 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 look at the PlayStation Four. PlayStation Four didn't really innovate at all. They just said, "What is the most common sense idea?" PlayStation is also or a colossal, huge name that has sold endless hundreds of millions over the past so twenty is years. Nintendo. So Nintendo, is Nintendo has had a history of pissing off people, and do you think that them putting a more powerful system is gonna like suddenly patch that? Ju Put a giant band-aid and everything shiny, sunny, happy, sunshine, and rainbows. Really? Because the vast majority I talk to about Nintendo says, man, I loved Blank, or I loved Mario, or Zelda, or Smash, or... But you're talking among game enthusiasts, whereas a lot of people are also mainstream people who buy Xboxes just for Madden, Halo, Game Gears. Yeah, who yes. don't exactly play video games as an enthusiast, just more like average people. But, like, average people love Mario Kart. Like, average dad, people... Well, yeah, sure, they may have liked a Mario Kart, but that didn't exactly sell GameCubes like crazy, did they? You know, but it did sell a shit ton of Wiis. The know, Wii and, was, well, the Wii DSs, had... Re the Wii and, had... Re okay, well, the DSs are like $100, which makes them very cheap, and they have Pokemon on them, so Mario Kart's a nice bonus. And um, I forgot what, what was my other point. The Wiis also had... A control setup that really clicked with people right out the door. Since hence everyone bought a Wii, but didn't really buy that many games for it. As far as I can tell, because yeah, I see a lot of Wiis, and all I see is like maybe five games, only one of which says Nintendo on it. 
which which could either be like Mario Kart. I don't see many Legend of Zeldas. Sometimes I don't even see Smash Brothers. But I see Wii's. The, the thing here is, though, is you are that casual gamer. There are three systems to buy. You like Call of Duty. You like Madden. You like party games, kind of like Mario Party and Mario Kart. There's a system that's all three. There's a system that's lacking one. You know, and I feel as though, like, Nintendo... First off, if Nintendo offered their, their franchises elsewhere, their games elsewhere, I wouldn't buy a Nintendo console. That's for damn sure. That is damn skippy. Like, if, Nintendo, if I could get Smash and Bayonetta and Wonderful 101 on the PS4, I damn sure would. So... Hello? Oh, yeah. See you. Sorry. Um... I don't know. I feel like I feel like if they're going to compete against Microsoft and Sony, there's gonna it's gonna take a lot. It's anyway. I just can't help but feel like they're gonna have to like radically rethink the way they do everything, and then it's gonna be a case of are there still going to be Nintendo or is it still going to be something different that it's just not the same anymore? Then you end up probably losing that fan base. I have no idea because, you know, it's like great as you know as it's as great as much as I would love to say, hey, imagine if all the third parties that are super successful like Dragon Age and you know like with franchises like Dragon Age and Mass Effect and Call of Duty and um, Street Fighter were on Nintendo systems, you would totally buy a Nintendo system, which is great and all, but what, what, how I mean, are you going to co- how are you going to convince them even if Nintendo was selling a powerful system? Well, we've never, like because, had, we, because... we've never gotten to see it. We've never gotten to see a Nintendo system that is on par in every way with its competition. And do you close. think do you think they're going to ever make it on par? Because if they're going to make it on par, basically it is PlayStation with a Nintendo. But even then, it's going to be have that image stuck on there that says, "Hi, we're a family friendly system," and you're trying to sell a hardcore fighting game. Hmm. People are probably going to buy it on PlayStation still. All right. Well, so here, here's the thing, yeah. though, with that. You, you look, you look at the N64. N64 did well. It only did one third as well as the PlayStation did, but still did well. And that system didn't have the kid-friendly stigma, but the, and it was actually beating the PlayStation for a while there. But it didn't have Final Fantasy. And it didn't have the Metal system. Gear. That system was also riding on the success and the, um, what was it like the success and the what's the word I'm looking for? The success and the praise of the Super Nintendo, yeah. which had an extremely, uh, which built a really strong backbone for the N64 to work with, whereas the Wii U is working on the Wii, which could be seen as well. It's a ma- the Wii is a massive sales success, but it it was it was a thing that was kind of in the two thousands. Yeah, because the way yeah. I look at it, because it wasn't like the people who bought the Wii thought, "Oh man, let's buy the Wii U." It it didn't exactly have that thing with like with a smartphone where Apple pretty much said, "Here's the iPhone," and then every and then it stuck. The Wii was a concept that it's going to stick in the two thousands. So, you know, like the Wii, you just kind of. I just really don't know. Like the Wii had a lot of problems. Like the bad, the bad news about the Wii, it was underpowered. Uh, way, way too much shovelware on it. Um, whereas the Xbox One has the 360 to work off of with it, and the PS4 had the PS3 to work off of with. Whereas Nintendo just had the Wii, which I don't know about the Wii. It's um, had great games, but it also had a gigantic load of shovelware, and a lot of people who bought the Wii bought it because of those motion controls so, this is true i mean yeah would be kind of nice if i could just buy i mean yeah i agree if i could like buy um what's the multi if i could buy dragon age it would look exactly the same as it would on the ps4 or xbox one and i get to play it with my wii u pro controller heck yes i would but is it ever going to happen? No. And why won't it happen? Just so many things have to be drastically different for it to ever happen. 
and that's just the problem I see. And I don't know if Nintendo's are going to ever do it because it's not like Nintendo is not Sony or Microsoft, even from, you know, from like, yeah, Nintendo was like one of the most successful companies in the 2000s because of the Wii. But are they like Sony or Microsoft? Sony has a movie division, a music division. They have entire electronics divisions. They make everything from portable music players to smartphones to super expensive computers to super high end products to the thousands of dollar cameras that you know people use to film interviews and that kind of stuff. And Microsoft is a colossal software giant. They sell Microsoft Office, they sell Windows, they sell business services, they sell, like they're, these companies are like huge and they have ridiculous amounts of money. Yes, Nintendo has a giant piggy bank, but at the same time, what does Nintendo know how to do is to make games and make, and sort of make systems. They're not like Microsoft or Sony where they have entire divisions of research teams that do focus groups and focus tests or whatever they call it to determine what feature is going to help them sell that extra 1 million systems. And I, I highly doubt Nintendo has a division that is like that sophisticated. They probably do because, you know, they kind of have to have some common sense. But, and like that's the other thing too. Okay, is Nintendo ever going to be capable of making an online service that's compatible against, c competitive against uh, PSN or Xbox Live? Maybe, but like again, Sony has huge money and power. Microsoft has an entire operating systems division. Nintendo, I don't know. Like this is probably why you, this is probably why the Wii U and 3DS don't really seem as sophisticated as the Vita or. PS4, Xbox One. It's like Nintendo's Nintendo. They're kind of... I wouldn't call them niche because the 3DS is selling like... It's still selling great and all. But... Yeah, it would be nice if they made a competitive system. But I just don't see it ever happening. Well, It's they, just kind of like one of those things that you kind of have to accept. Um, I mean, I kind of accept it at this point that Okay, yeah, Mass Effect Three is gonna ha has happened on the Wii U, but I'm pretty sure to EA that was eh, it's just a half-assed project. Let's see how well it sells, and if it doesn't reach a million, eh, don't bother with it anymore. Um, you just kind of accept as a Nintendo console owner that third parties aren't going to happen. You can wish they could happen, but the long history says that since the N64 days, and especially since the GameCube days, third parties just don't come to Nintendo. Like, especially with the Wii. It's okay. just... And image is, like, another big deal with it, too. I, I also That's, think part of, part of it is publishers, developers don't go there because it's a lot harder to go there. It's I a mean, lot harder to go there. I mean, like I said, I swear, image... Square, image Square, would have done, Square would have done Final Fantasy VII on the 64. They couldn't. And they literally couldn't. And do you think that image... Do you think that perception is going to be fixed? I mean... Whenever you get like a perception like Nintendo, it's like it's not like the, any of these dudes are going to do a reversal. Like if Nintendo's going to take the risk of building a game console that is on par with the PS4, or Xbox One, and get all these third parties, it's not like it's going to get fixed with one generation. It could probably take two generations or three or four. It could take many generations and a lot of lost money for them to, you know, finally convince you know Square or. Or um, well, 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 Capcom to bring it, their it, stuff back over. It it took one to lose them. That's 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 one thing I will say. I mean, it takes a long time to build a good image, but it's, it's very easy to lose it. Pretty sure, like I don't know what the saying is, but everyone's kind of like know what that analogy is, right? Yeah. It it's like it takes a long time to build trust, but it's very easy to lose it. Yeah. Nintendo is the, that's a huge risk for Nintendo to take, and there's like so many problems that just. They're not Sony and Microsoft. That's probably the biggest one right there. Okay, because even if Nintendo build a competitive system, Microsoft and Sony have more money. Yeah, Nintendo has a giant piggy bank, but that's like, but that's like their emergency piggy bank. That isn't like their, oh, if we lose money on the game consoles, we'll just make it off by selling more movies or selling more um, Microsoft Office licenses. I don't well, know. It's, well, it's well, just, it's Nintendo against two super giants that have pretty much kind of well, came in and took over the console market but well things fun, are kind of different now
Fun little story about Nintendo right now, though. Nintendo is selling so many more Wii U's right now than they have in the past. And you're probably wondering, like, what is causing this? Well, uh, it is largely Smash Brothers, but really, it's Amiibo. Amiibo is selling like crazy. Certain characters you can't get anywhere. Um, perfect example of this is if you are not looking for Mario, Link, Zelda, Peach, you are out of luck. I recently was looking for Little Mac this past weekend. He is my main, after all. I wanted to have a Little Mac figure. Uh, could not find him. Went, went to a couple different stores. Well, uh, could not find Little Mac. Same thing with Ike. Same thing with Marth. I did find one Wii Fit trainer. That one I was just kind of wasn't looking to buy. It was just one kind of taking note because I heard it was rare. Uh, did not find a single Animal Crossing villager. Did not find a single Captain Falcon. So there you go. Amiibo. Sound like fucking crazy. Anthony, thoughts? Um, Nintendo probably. Hmm. Let's see. Mario Link. I feel like you see a lot of Mario Links and probably Samus because, you know, that's like their core franchises. So they made a lot of them. But with Little Mac and Marth and Ike, probably didn't make as much because it's not like Fire Emblem sells as crazy as a Pokemon does. Um, and no, so they sure. probably so they probably made fewer of those only to realize that they're all gone. Because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I can walk into any store and just find Mario's everywhere. And you know, obviously Mario is much more famous and much more popular than than most of Nintendo's franchises, but you can still find them. I think it's has something like sometimes cult followings can just make things disappear really fast. In the case of Fire Emblem, oh yeah, can totally see why they're completely gone. Little Mac, maybe. Wow. Um, you can sorry. get a Marth Amiibo for fifty dollars on Amazon. Um, yeah, these sell out to make it things expensive too. C- continuing on though with that little tangent, uh, you still can't not get GameCube adapters. Uh, you still can't get. Um, uh, there's so there's so much stuff you cannot get. You still can't get GameCube adapters. You still can't get. Uh, GameCube can well, you can get GameCube controllers, but they're slightly more expensive. There, there's just a lot of stuff you can't get. But you can get yourself a Wii U. Buy one. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Honestly, though, like Nintendo is probably kind of guessing that because of their uh, lack of Wii U sales, they probably thought, eh, let's not make too much in case nobody buys it, and then people suddenly buy it. Well, now, I don't know. They need, now they need to start producing more Little Macs. Well, it's going to be a little bit difficult, and it's going to take some time, because it isn't as simple as... Because um, you remember back in the days when the Wii U... Well, sorry, not the Wii U. The Wii was selling like crazy, and it took them a good couple months before they could actually increase production. Yes, I do remember this. Yeah, because, you know... Granted, these things are not... They're, this, these things are not Wii's but, or as complicated as Wii's but the same idea kind of applies it's like you gotta get your whole supply chain to speed up before you can speed up production because adjusting this stuff takes time so it could be a while before we see more Little Macs or GameCube adapters or GameCube controller adapters or uh, yeah these figures um, like I, I want a Little Mac, I want Captain Falcon uh, who else was I looking forward to uh, there, there, there are a couple in there that I'm just like, what, what, why? No, I want you. I'm back in stock. Um. Besides them, though, and I'm glad for Nintendo about this. Uh, you know, I, I always said I thought I, Amiibo would break me in millions, and I was right because, you know, I, I want to buy so many Amiibos, and like I'm just looking, and I'm just like, oh god. Are you ready to dump a hundred thirty dollars on Amiibos? Like that's each set, right? Each set is thirteen figures. That is a hundred and thirty dollars before tax on fucking figures if you want to buy every set. I know, but at least they're somewhat usable instead of just like desk decorations. Mario Kart supports it. Hyrule Warrior Source supports it. Um, 
Smash obviously supports it. I mean, yeah, yeah. But they're, they're they're not really essential to those games. They're not really essential. They're just kind of like like again, they're like they're pretty cool little figures that you can put on your desk to celebrate the fact that you're a Nintendo fan. And um, yeah, honestly, I'm looking at some of the prices right now on Amazon and freaking twenty five. These things are literally getting scalped because they're in such short supply. I'm like I'm like looking at this. I'm like, really twenty five dollars for a Link Amiibo? Really? Well, yeah, you can still find Link in stores though. It's just hell, yeah. Man. It's probably better if you go and get it in a store, anyways, because you kind of don't want these things broken when they show up at your house. Oh, I mean, like I, I'm. Oh man, it it's frustrating for me because I, I was. Whew, I was looking to you know like like I want to be able to get these, but I have no confirmation that I'm going to be able to. Uh, so, who knows? Anyway. Uh, see what else? Ah, huh, I don't know that amiibo. Anthony, are you planning to get any? Uh, maybe next month. I was thinking this month, and then I kind of realized they're all sort of gone. Good, good luck to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be like hunting for wees, except not as stupid. I don't know, man. Uh, I went to I went to like three or four different stores this weekend. What? Like, I'm gonna be honest. Like, obviously, so you can get Mario and Link. Like, they probably made a huge number of those because that is basically the face of the franchises. But it's kind of like, you know, it would be kind of nice if I could get Marth and, uh, you know, maybe like a couple others. But at this point, it's like, yeah, they're selling like crazy. I can't find them. And I hope Nintendo keeps making them because I do not want to hear that these things are completely sold out and they stopped making them because that's some limited would- edition run. I would be so sad. I would be just like, I would immediately go on Amazon and pay $50 for Little Mac. <laughs> I would just be like, fuck you, Nintendo. Um, yeah, like, I get, but supposedly they're working on multiple runs, so that's good. Um, Hope so. Yeah, so. Because, you know, I'm like kind of like waiting and then just like, I mean, you can get Peach right now, but. Eh, no, I don't want Peach. There's some really specific ones I want. I want well, Link. Okay, I, want I know Marth. you. I know. I know you want. I uh, know you want Marth. Who else do you want? Uh, probably Samus. Samus uh, is easy. You can get Samus, no problem. Yeah, Metroid is not really as huge as it used to be. Um, Zelda. She's easy. I think they had a couple of those in stock at the stores I went to. Okay. I think that's it, really. Uh, let's see. I want. Uh, I want Villager. He's out of stock. Uh, I want Captain Falcon. He is definitely out of stock. Mario, I don't even have to worry about. I'm not even concerned about Mario. Um, Diddy Kong's out of stock, which I found weird. I don't really want him, but he's out of stock. Is and Diddy little... Kong even out yet? Shul... The, the second wave came out uh, this week. Okay, so we probably should wait a bit before they show up. Well, no, the set, yeah, they sold out in a day, Anthony. That's the thing, they sold out in a fucking day. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> like Captain Falcon, Little Mac, Ike, all sold out in a day. Like, that's fucking madness to me, but, it, but it's, you know, whatever. Ugh, oh, God. Something really tells me they did not make many of these. Because... Like, I mean, I don't know how many people who actually bought these and uh, don't own a Wii U because that's like one of the things that they try to sell with the Wii U, which is like use your Amiibo with your Wii U. I don't know if they work with the 3DS. I think they work with the new 3DS, but I don't know if they work with current 3DSs. But yeah, don't know if they're just buying it like regular toys and don't actually have a Wii U to use it with. I I mean, like, how many of these people... You have to wonder, right? Like, how many of these people... Because you who... think about it, you're a little boy, you don't have a Nintendo system, and all you have is a regular 3DS, but you're not aware of what Amiibo does. All you see is they use it with some weird gamepad thing that you've never seen before. But hey, you get a little toy, it's Link, he's awesome, and it's only $13. Oh my god. Like, my my you know, parents... It's, it's, it's just something you, you to know, play with. Our parents not... had to live through Pokemon, which was probably pretty bad. There was a lot of stuff that... 
parents have to live through. They have to live through Pokemon. They have to live through Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards, Pokemon trading cards, Beyblades. What else? I, I wasn't involved in Beyblade. I, I was involved in Yu-Gi-Oh, but only the card game, not anything else. Um, Video but like, games. <laughs> but I, I... But, like... Like, our parents had to live through Pokemon. It was pretty bad. I feel so fucking bad for parents who have to deal with Skylanders, Disney, Infinity, and this. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Well, let's be honest, though. It's like, I wasn't really that huge into Disney, so I'm okay. Um, same. So, Skylanders, I don't know. But you'll be surprised that when other kids get stuff that you want, you tell your parents to get it too. That's how Beyblades happened. Um, yeah, those were expensive. Hmm. I mean, it was definitely would have been a pain because I would be like saying, I don't want one, not two, but five amiibos, please. <laughs> and, and, and you and you think about amiibo. And I mean, like if I was a kid, I probably who would I would have wanted as a kid? Like I flash back to kid Bronson. Let me check on that. Like, like I would have definitely wanted Link. That's for sure. I would have wanted Ike. I would have wanted uh, Marth. Um, I probably would have wanted Fox and Captain Falcon. Um, let's see who else would I have wanted as a kid? And then like Donkey Kong probably. So I like I would have wanted six or seven of them. And like once again, thirteen dollars a piece. And that right there is ninety bucks. Yeah, you know, like, like that doesn't sound bad, right? Oh, thirteen dollars, that's not bad. I'll get you this stupid fucking toy or I'll buy the stupid toy. I know, but it, you don't want one. But yeah, exactly. That's you the thing. Want... Unless it's like, you know, oh, I only care about Legend of Zelda and everything, I don't give a shit about Nintendo. But here's the thing, when you like Nintendo, you don't just like one thing from Nintendo. It's not like with Sony where I'm like, oh, it's just Uncharted and Gran Turismo, that's it. Don't care anything. Don't care about anything else. But no, but with Nintendo, you care more than just two or three of the franchises. You kind of care about their whole freaking catalog. So I want Kirby. I want, I want Mario. I want Link. I want Zelda. I want Marth. I want Ike. Uh, I want the Animal Crossing Villager. Toon Link, Bowser, Captain yeah. Falcon, like it just snowballs into this like fucking... giant, giant list of figures you have to get because when you're a fan of Nintendo, you're a fan of many things Nintendo, not just like one or two franchises, which may be the case with Xbox and PlayStation. I mean, how many characters are in Smash Wii U? Uh, a lot. Hold like on, me... more than thirty. Let me count. Or you could no, let me do a Google search. Hmm. There's 51 in 3DS and Wii U. 51, you added Mewtwo, that's 52, so that's 52 figures. 13 oh, times... Oh, dear. 13 times 52. That is $676. Screw the Xbox One, I'm buying Amiibo. Fucking... <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> oh my god. Screw the Xbox One, I'm buying Amiibo. Fucking horrible. <laughs> They, oh my god, thank god I don't like certain characters. I don't give a fuck about Shulk. I don't, I don't care, care much about Mario, except maybe Bowser. I, I don't care about Peach or... or You're gonna get Charizard Peach, um, and Greninja? I'm, I, I'm not, I don't give a shit about Charizard. I might get a Greninja. Um, oh, fucking... Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Man, that's, that's a fucking nightmare. It's nightmare. probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. I'm not. I'm not getting all this fucking things. Well, 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 yeah, we're not. Drugs. Well, yeah, yeah, I know you aren't, but it's like they're gonna like probably make all fifty-one of them. Yeah, fifty-two. I mean, we're I th- getting, yeah, we're getting Mewtwo. I mean, there's a few here that I'm thinking might not happen. Like I look at Shulk and I'm like, mm, no, he's in production. He comes out in February. Oh. The only one that okay. might not get made is me fighters. Yeah. So fifty one still like that is. I could buy Jigglypuff. That's that is that's stupid. It's kind of cute. Seriously. I, 
I, I would get Rob. Rob the robot. I'd be down <laughs> Rob. Oh, here here's one that's really cheap. Dark Pit and Pit. Yeah. Fuck that. That's stupid. That's just a color change. Doctor Mario. I will say I will say uh, I was watching Giant Bomb do their uh, their quick look of Smash Bros. And someone got got uh, Doctor Mario's uh, final smash. And Jeff Gersman says pills, pills, and then fires it off. It was okay. really funny to me for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Wow. There's, like I look at like I look at this character list like Mario yes, Donkey Kong maybe, Link yes, Samus yes, Kirby no, Fox maybe, Pikachu no, Bowser maybe, Pit no, Villager yes, Mega Man yes, Wii Fit Trainer no, Captain Oliver no. Luigi, maybe. Peach, no. Toon Link, yes. Sonic, yeah. yes. Marth, no. Rosalina, yes. Okay, Zelda. I think we got the point. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to spend somewhere in the ballpark of 200. Like, there's some characters, like, that. it hurts to say, but I'm being honest. $200. Two fucking hundred. Try explaining that bill to whoever is, whoever, you know, He's like, try explaining that bill to someone. He's like, so, uh, so what did you buy last month? I spent $200 on action figures. Yeah. You are gonna look like you are on drugs. <laughs> oh, screw the Xbox. I'm buying me some Abibos. That must be really hard to explain to someone. If I somehow one day spend three hundred and fifty dollars on amiibos, people are gonna look at me and think, "What the hell am I doing?" So many things you can buy with three hundred dollars. Right. So, but uh, they're selling Wii U's, right? Yep. That's good. I mean, obviously, it's not gonna reach the Xbox One or PS4. I don't think, but it helps. Anyway, I'm gonna do a quick. Speaking of which, it was like kind of like. Um, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, they, they, um, what is it, like, Nintendo's actually finally turning a profit, like, within the last few months. Like, they're not, like, losing ridiculous amounts of money, but they're actually turning a small profit. So, that's pretty good. Well, that's, that is good news. Um, mm -hmm. all right, so, we are gonna do, uh, a couple of quick hits here, and we'll be done. Um, so Broken Age is moving the the second half of Broken Age is moving to be released in early 2015 instead of this year. That is the adventure game by Double Fine that was kickstarted. Okay. The Witcher 3, which everybody and their mother seems to be excited for, was supposed to come out in February. It has been delayed until May. Move uh, okay. Rise of the Tomb Raider is apparently being published by Microsoft, so all hopes of a PlayStation release are pretty much dead. I wouldn't say dead, I'd say delayed. Very because unlikely. Mass well, it could be very unlikely, but Mass Effect 1 was also published on by Microsoft for the Xbox 360. It took a while, but But, but that, that was a, that was a case of IP switching hands. Like fucking. Well, no. Here's the thing. Bioware was actually owned by EA at the time. I think. Okay. But here's the thing. They they made a Xbox 360 version, which was my, published by Microsoft Game Studios. But there was a PC version that was published by EA about a year later, or something like that, within a year after the 360 release. And then when Mass Effect 2 came out, it was fully published by E3, and then Mass Effect 2 came out to the PS. Three and the Mass Effect three happened on you know multi plats and then Mass Effect one eventually came to the PS three really late but eventually came so you know you could have another Mass Effect case but you know is it going to happen I'm not sure but it's possible. All right, well, continuing on with this, um, gaming pioneer uh, may, well, who many people credit with the creation of video games. Uh, Ralph Bear has passed away at the age of 92. He was the creator of the first home console video game system uh, known as the Brown Box or the Magnavox, uh, which was the pre precursor to the Magnavox Odyssey and Pong. In 2006, he received the National Medal of Technology from President George W. Bush. Uh, people call him the father of video games. He uh, pretty much... 
did a lot of huge things that got the industry going. Uh, just a moment of silence for Ralph Bear, please. All right. Moving forward. Also, I do believe, um, I think he was the guy that invented the game Simon. You know that little yeah, toy yeah, game that yep. yeah, yes, he, he invented was. Simon. Continuing forward, the final piece of news is Capcom has accidentally announced Street Fighter V before the Game Awards and PlayStation. And it is exclusive to PlayStation 4 and PC. Well, that's pretty interesting. If it was exclusive to PS4, that's huge. But it's also going to PC. Hmm. Um, one thing I can say about this is I... Um, I, I so I've been shopping around my fight stick, getting offers for it recently, and th this is going to determine whether I sell it or not. Um, you know, I, <clears throat> you know, what what I would say is that I will sell my fight stick if it does not work with PS4. If they don't release an adapter or they don't update the system to where, oh yeah, you can still use your fight sticks on PS4. Because if that's the case, then fine. I bought that thing for Street Fighter. Fucking yes, I'll keep it. But if that thing, if Street Fighter V did not support PS3 fight sticks, I will sell that son of a bitch. Okay. So just want to get that out there. Anybody who wants to buy a pro quality is the same fight sticks the pros use in near perfect condition. Uh, your heads up, because I have one. Uh, anyway, have you got any news stories or anything for us? Uh, not that I can think of. Okay, cool. Well, well. we might as well like, kind of give people the reminder for the PlayStation Plus games, because I'm kind of like downloading some for my PS3. Uh, for PS4, you get Plants vs. Zombies. For the PS3, you can get the Hitman HD Trilogy thing and Deadly Premonition. Which, the real thing you should have mentioned is, hey, you can get Deadly Premonition for free playstation plus subscription required yes uh free the the, the uh you, you know i actually took some suggestions for uh people started throwing suggestions out during the live stream last night for super mega awesome go playtime games uh we we've gotten requests to do bayonetta the first one Ooh, gotten, that would be interesting. We've gotten requests. Uh, we've gotten quite a few requests for Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, that would be a good idea if one of us can get the PS4 version. I well, I'm getting fifty dollars of PSN credit next year because of that lawsuit because I bought my Vita at launch. So what is that lawsuit? Basically, they had false advertising in one of their commercials saying that you could play online over 3G. Or it made it appear that way. So now everyone who bought their Vita during that time period gets a $50 PSN credit next year. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, GTA 5 was a suggestion. Catherine was a suggestion. Um, there's one more suggestion in there, too, that I forgot. Um, oh, well. Anyway. Um, yeah. That... Uh, but, um, God, gotta go back. Really spacey night, everyone. Very tired. Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's, a, that's about it for news, I feel. Anyway, uh. Have you got any news for us or any comments, questions, concerns? Uh, not that I can think of right now. All right. Well, this is bad and awkward. All right, boys. It's the first, it's the first game cast in a while. We're still getting to the swing of things. Yeah. It's gonna be, like, it's gonna you be... know, we did miss some things. We never really talked about what we've been playing, but that's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel that at this point would be so huge. Like, we'll get that next week. Well, it's like we could talk about the last week, but it's kind of like we kind of said what we've been playing in other areas of the site. You know, the web, yeah. With the website yeah. already. So, yeah. Yeah, Game of the Year awards are happening next week. The top tens will be posted. There are going to be seven of them. Seven top ten lists. Uh, then there's going to be the uh, standard awards list, which that's going to be fun. And then we're going to have the general top ten uh, in which we engage in gladiatorial combat 
over, uh, you know, what's the best video games of the year. I know, uh, I know we've, I know I joked around by saying this, but uh, we have, there was that video, settle it in Smash. Uh, oh can... man, is that how we're going to sell our ties now? <laughs> just like because then I'm just, because because I'm just gonna win. Uh, Anthony Todd's right all the time. I don't know. I could. I think I would have a couple good matches against. You, you would have a couple good matches, especially if it was Nick or Bremen or John. Oh, it's like it, it's just gonna be like you and I just completely dominate the list because it's like no, no Pokemon Alpha Sapphire will get in the top ten. No, it's just a remake. Settle it in Smash. I that was. That was someone's number one, and I was just like, really? Yeah, I wouldn't, put, really... I wouldn't put a remake on that list, but if I were to be like, no, Drive Club, desert, Drive Club is better than Forza Horizon 2, and Nick won't believe me on that, and I would just be like, fine, we'll sell it in Smash then. When... That would be so fucking unfair. The only people who play Smash are you, myself, like, regularly. Like, Tori and Steph play Smash, but not super often. Like, the people who play Smash, really, I play it every day at work. John plays it at game night, and you play it every day at home. So, like, it would just be us three just whooping everyone's asses. So... <laughs> and then we put Smash at number one because it solved our game of the year problems. I, I think that could be our number one. I'm not even joking when I say I think that game has potential to be number it one. It has potential because it is the most agreeable, in a way. Like, Bayonetta 2, it's just you and me and, and maybe John. John trying to convince everybody about it. Like, uh, no, with... you fucking fight Satan on top of a jet. A jet. Well, fucking, blah. Yeah. You know? Well, it flies up a mountain. What is... Oh, my God. Just you fight, you fight a monster in the middle of downtown New York. How is this not the game of the year? Oh, um, Bayonetta 2 is amazing. You, it's you fuck, great. You know, in the first game you killed God. In this game you kill Satan, or the equivalent to. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, so yeah. And so Whew. the game was so fucking good. It's really awesome. Seriously, um, buy it. But please, honestly, buy if you people are gonna talk about how you don't have games to play on your Wii U, like I freaking had my Wii U for like what a year and three months now. Freaking got like seven or eight games on it already, and it caught, it was really surprising I, because I, granted, I, granted, Pikmin three was handed to me because of uh, that's, Mario yeah. Kart eight, and because of Mario Kart eight. But I have like Pikmin, I have Wind Waker, which was part of a bundle. I had Super Mario three D World, I have Hyrule Warriors, Smash Bayonetta, uh, forgetting one somewhere. Hmm. Okay, so here's my list. Yeah. I have Wind Waker, Super Mario U, which I did get for free, Wonderful 101, Mario Kart 8, Bayonetta 2, and Smash, and I still want to buy Donkey Kong and Mario 3D World. So, uh, like, that, you know, that's a solid list. That That is a solid list of games right there. Um, yeah. Granted, then, but granted, all these games are from Nintendo, which... Kind of tells me they did a pretty good job putting and stuff out for the system. It's all from Nintendo and Platinum Games. I mean, and, I know we, yeah, this, I'm not going to go back to that third party debate again, but that's pretty good considering Nintendo's like the only thing left keeping the system alive. And Platinum Games. Which, yeah, and Platinum Games, which they made a game that didn't sell very well. They made two games that didn't sell very well. Oh, man. Two really good games. It's like when third parties well. actually come to Nintendo, no one buys it, which is always kind of like the problem. Well, I mean, it was, it was the a... same with the Wii. Like with the Wii, people say, well, you've got a potential audience of 120 million people or something like that. And then they put out a game like Mad World or uh, Zack and Wiki and then no just more nothing heroes. happens. God damn it. Yeah, and, then, and then just nobody buys it. Why did no one buy No More Heroes? That game was the shit. There's a lot of things that people don't buy that make me that make us sit down and go like, "What the hell, people? Go buy, go out there and buy Yakuza Four. Actually, buy Yakuza Five when it happens. Okay, the fact that they're even bringing it over to America is a freaking amazing. It's not gonna be great though. It's gonna come out the same year as Persona Five. Oh my God, that you and I are gonna be such fucking weeaboos when that <laughs> comes out. We are like <laughs> it's just gonna be like weeaboos ever. I was going to say that there are... Because Yakuza 5 is going to make me break out the PS3 again. Uh, for a while. 
Um, Persona 5 is actually coming to the PlayStation 4, right? Yeah, yeah, they're doing... So, thankfully, I don't have to keep the PS3 sitting on my desk um, like, that much I longer. was so happy that after Persona Ultimax and Final Fantasy X, I could finally box up the PS3 or put it in my entertainment rack and just keep it there and not bring it out. And they're like, oh no, Yakuza 5 is actually coming to America. And I'm just like, son of a bitch. But that's good, because you get yeah, to enjoy a game that got a perfect score from Famitsu. I, I know, I am really excited about that. I'm also just kind of like, grrr, I'm just, grrr, I'm just stoked grrr. that I'm just stoked that Yakuza 5 is even happening in North America, because freaking, I got Yakuza 4 for like $17 off of Amazon. And this was like the middle of February, or January, I forgot what it was. It was the middle of winter. Because you said it was awesome, and I recently got on a top 10 list again, I bought it, loved it. Yeah, that, that fucking... But everyone and their mother was like, uh, it should be number nine. And I'm like, fine, fuck you people. You don't understand how the, how the Yakuza. Well, you don't understand the Yakuza life. Well, well, you got me to play the game now. The game's so good. Those games are It's ridiculous. great. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should do a totally new Super Mega Awesome Go play time of those. those we could, really yeah. Well, it now depends on which one. Three, because you've played, I mean, you've seen the story of four. I have, yeah. So, I I mean, I'm the next but one. But that will involve you taking your PS3 out every week. It's, it's out! It is it is staying out. I know, but it's going to stay out for, like, another good two years or however long it, it takes for us to anyway not for get sidetracked. I just imagine that when we're playing Super Mega Awesome Go Playtime that game because it's so open ended, we're gonna just gonna end up doing a bunch of stupid things. Like, we're gonna spend an entire episode eating food and looking did, at did, food did, trivia. Did, we're gonna we, spend we a whole have, episode looking at we, alcohol we, trivia. We might have just accidentally found our game of the game that we're doing by saying this. <laughs> Uh, it's like we're gonna uh, like look up random drinks. We're gonna spend an entire episode going to a hostess club and dumping lots of money there. I don't know. Wondering hostess what clubs, the ho- hostess clubs were not in three. They were not in. Three. Oh, they took Darn. that out for America because they didn't think about. Well, it's there in it. four. It it is there in four. If we do four or five, we're gonna be spending an entire episode just doing that pointless thing. <laughs> five is very long, from what I hear. Um. No, Nick's like no. I love how like Nick is like you guys should do an American game for the next one, and you and I have generally agreed with that. And we're gonna like so we have our next super awesome go playtime game. It's like oh, what is it? Yakuza Five. So, um, our title also sounds Japanese game esque orientated. This is true. Hold on, my cat is wants attention. All right. Well, uh, I think that so. I think that's pretty much it, though. Um, we'll be back next week. Our game of the year stuff is coming. Go watch that. It's gonna be awesome. Seven video, actually eight videos in total. Two podcasts. A shit ton of work. Anthony's tears all over it because he has to edit the videos. Um. Anyway, we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye.